welcome back to another video. Today, I'm trying something different, very different, and I'm making a conspiracy theory video. You guys probably saw the title and thumbnail of this video, so today, we are talking about the real possibility of the moon landing being faked, of course, aliens on the moon, and other moon-related conspiracy theories. Warning. This video is about conspiracy theories. Not facts. So government? Please don't take me home. Also, please don't sue me. To understand the theories, we must first break down what was happening at that time in the world. At this time, America was in the Cold War. Tensions seemed high, and basically, nuclear war seemed inevitable. For this reason, both sides, America and the USSR, present-day Russia, wanted to be the best at everything, including space travel. Space, the final frontier. Say that was said by a character named Captain Kirk on a show called Star Trek, played by William Shatner. This, this saying really represented the times of the 1960s, when there was a boom in people who wanted nothing more than to just explore the stars. All of this led to what is known as the space race, or what is more well known as the moon race. This was the race between the U.S.'s NASA and the U.S.S.R.'s Rosmicos to get to the moon. Now I think it's important to understand some of the attempts at this time to get to outer space and, more importantly, the moon. On April 12, 1961, Soviet cosmonaut, I'm probably going to butcher this name, Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin. Who's was their child at? Besides just having a first name, middle name, and last name that's quite weird, he's also known for two more things. One, becoming the first man to orbit the Earth. And two, becoming the first man to go to space. A feat only possible with his Vostok 1 capsule. We gotta love those. Soviet engineers, don't we? Along by Alan Shepard, Mercury Redstone 3, yes, it's kind of a tongue twister, nicknamed Freedom 7, flew into space 1961, the same year as the Vostok 1. But unlike the Vostok 1, the Freedom 7 just didn't make it, and, well, didn't orbit the Earth. But on the bright side of things, Alan Shepard, after this night, was made the second man in space and the first American to even go up there. Luna 2 was the first man-made object to hit 
the moon's rocky surface. Luna 2 was made by the Soviet Union, otherwise known as the USSR, or the Soviets, or you know, the Russians, you know, the main antagonist of Netflix's hit series, Stranger Things. Don't know if you've ever heard of it. Also, going back to Luna 2, because this isn't a Stranger Things discussion, it landed on September 13th, 1959, just two years before, guess what, Vostok 1 and Freedom 7. And guess what else? That's also the year my grandma was born. On February 20th, 1962, a year after Vostok 1 and Freedom 7, and two years after Luna 2 and of course my grandma's birth. So you might be asking, who flew the Friendship 7? Well, I'm very glad you asked, young Jerry. Basically, Friendship 7 was flown by a guy named John Glenn. You might have heard of him. Basically, the whole entire Friendship 7 thing made John Glenn so famous that he literally has a boulevard named after him in Syracuse called John Glenn Boulevard. It's one of the most used boulevards, or just roads in general, in all of Syracuse. When John Glenn became famous, it wasn't just because he went to space and came back to us. Even though that is a remarkable feat, it was because he was the first American to orbit the Earth, just like the other Russian or Soviet actually, uh, cosmonauts before I, I'll put a little thing right here that just says me saying it because I don't know how to say it. Something else that I find very important um, to understand for this whole entire uh, video is the moon landing itself. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Cohen. What do they have in, in common? I'll tell you one thing. They were the three brave, brave men who piloted the spacecraft Apollo 11 became the three, in my opinion, most famous Americans in all of time. These three men piloted Apollo 11 into space. These men were piloting this spaceship for 240,000 miles. That's 76 hours, and yes, I did look it up. And this was just until they got to the lunar surface. It took three hours and one minute just to get there. Nevertheless, all the other stuff that they had to prepare for before they got done. This was where Armstrong had said one of the most infamous lines in all of American history. The Eagle has landed. At 1039, six hours and 22 minutes later, and five hours ahead of the schedule, Armstrong opened the hatch to the lunar moth. As he went down the ladder to the lunar surface, millions watched. Approximately 500. 17 minutes later, at 10.56 p.m., Neil Armstrong stated one of the, if not the most famous quotes of all time. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. He said this to NASA's control center in Houston, Texas. 19 minutes later, Buzz Aldrin joined Neil Armstrong on the lunar surface. They did this so that they could run tests, um, take pictures of the lunar surface, and speak to, guess who, the then President Richard. We call him Trickety Dick around here, because he was a trickster. Together, the astronauts planted the American flag, which we will get back to later in this video. They also left a plaque that stated, Airmen from the planet Earth, first step foot upon America, July 1969. It came in deep for all mankind. At 5.35 p.m., Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin docked and reunited with Michael Collins. At 12.56 a.m. on July 22nd, Apollo 11 and her crew, Armstrong had called her, <laughs> flew back to the beautiful blue marvel that is Earth, our home. If you're watching this in the future, eradicated the planet of all life if you know there is a future and if the only ones watching this 
or I don't know, aliens who created a computer simulation to see what life was before, you know, you were alive. And if you have some weird subtitle called, I don't know, Quatarex, uh, to watch YouTube videos just so that you can understand them, especially the weirdest YouTube channel on YouTube, you know, this man and my channel, Nolkin. Even if, I don't know, YouTube's still around in this weird post apocalyptic future that I'm making up in my brain, all my work has come to nothing. Finally, after, I don't know, uh, five pages of the script that I made for this video, let's get into the video and the meat and bones of it, the theories. So a lot of people believe in the existence of aliens, myself included, because I'm crazy. But some theorists take this belief to the next extreme and believe that there is evidence to support that during the Apollo moon landing missions, there is evidence of extraterrestrial life. And if you don't know what that means, that means aliens. And people believe that there is proof of that out there and on these tapes and photographs and videos. One of these theorists operates here on YouTube. His name is ET Database, link in the description. He, if you didn't know, and you don't watch UFO videos, is a self-proclaimed UFOologist. E.T., if I may call you that, does videos where, obviously, he tries to prove the existence of alien life. He does this through showing pictures and videos of supposed alien objects and bases, and of course, alien craft, or, you know, as us, regular folk call them, UFOs. But these pictures and videos aren't just from the moon, as this video is implying. These pictures come from Mars, because, you know, the theory of Martians. And the thing is, is that most of these videos aren't about another planet in evidence of alien life there. They're trying to prove them on our planet, Earth, and specifically Area 51. But that's for another video. Just let me read to you the about page of his channel on YouTube and try to tell me that he's not really believing in this stuff. When I began UFO sightings daily in 2010, I had the single intention of defending those who say they have seen UFOs. Because they were often ridiculed on the web, now that happens less. I started on YouTube back in 2007. Already getting pretty deep in. When NASA was going to shut down the live space station cams, I organized you to email NASA to tell them to keep the cameras off. Dot dot dot. Because, you know, gotta be kind of creepy and mysterious. Street dots. Let's get back into this. And we succeeded. The cams are still up. Good on you, E.T. You started something with your life. We posted some amazing sightings discoveries only these nine years, and we have made it to major news sites like CNN, NBC, Time, Christian Post, Huffington Post, MSN, Fox News, Space.com, Sports Grid, Yahoo News, IB Times, Science Times, Washington Post, and even Scientist, New Scientist, thousands more in over 30 languages. Good job spreading your message. I wish I could right now. I wish I could. Talk to CNN, Wolf Blitzer. Anyway, also, how does this guy know? Is there languages that I don't think the human mind can process that much? Polyglot, 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 polyglot. So, let's keep reading. I even talked to uh, directors from Destination Truth and Ancient Aliens who used my site on their shows. Good on you. The nut job on ancient aliens making a fortune because he's a nut job. Totally unlike me. <sighs> totally. To me, this about page sounds like he's not joking or making fun of these people who believe in aliens. It sounds like he 
believes that he has true evidence in aliens and their existence. E.T. also believes that the moon is not a organic mass or giant rock, but is indeed a giant space station um, trying to orbit the Earth to basically look in at its inhabitants. Us. Humans. Again. This might all just be a computer simulation, so I don't know. What do I know? Right? E.T.'s evidence for this? Well, he says that there is debris on the moon that he claims to be millions of years old. He also says that there are reflective roofs, and he believes some of them might be spaceships or, as he likes to call it, an alien city. Um, you kind of lost me there, E.T. When you bring in the alien city and how the moon is just fake and it... I, I, I can't get behind you on that one. More evidence of aliens being on the moon comes from a picture taken by the lunar orbiter leaving the surface of the moon. Richard Hoagland, a self-proclaimed NASA conspiracy theorist, believes that there is a mile-long shard just of something coming out of the moon's surface. Oakland also states that this shard must be artificially made. So why don't you guys take a look at the picture? But it seems that all cannot be trusted, especially Richard Hoagland. You know why? because he faked it. Richard achieved this fakery by just using contrast uh, filters and smoothing filters to make it seem like light was coming out of the lunar surface and he claimed that it was a shard. An actual piece of evidence that might not be faked comes in the form of a light being seen over astronaut David Scott's head. Experts say that this was just a lens flare above David Scott's head and no extraterrestrials involved. Experts also said something very similar about what Richard Hoagland had done. They blamed it on him and said that he'd faked it and that he made contrasting filters and smoothing filters and made this fake shard coming out of the moon. But what if he didn't fake it? NASA said something very similar to both of these different pieces of evidence that they're trying to hide something. They said that the supposed evidence of an alien city was just an optical illusion, like you can see a face on the moon. But can we really trust the US government who hides things from us all the time, who train the experts, who runs NASA, who creates the claims about why these things are happening, and who denies all the accusations? That is for you to decide. But the thought Aliens, aliens, being on the moon and being seen in the moon tapes and being seen in pictures of the moon sounds possible. And you know why? Because I might just be some lunatic who is a conspiracy theorist and all these things, but there's still a possibility for everything. Almost every single conspiracy theory could happen. You can't rule out anything. And that is a fact. So in total, even with all the evidence, I give this theory just one and a half hollow moonlanders out of five. Now you might be asking, this is the most detailed theory on this list. Well, basically the reason is, is because yes, there's still a possibility of it. You can't rule out many theories, but is it likely in my opinion? Not really. Would, you know, aliens be living on the moon? Would we not have seen them already? But again, that is for you to decide. And I just wanted to say one more thing. I do believe in aliens. And you want to know how much? I believe in them. Five out of five. Martians out of five. That's how much I believe in aliens. You're welcome, America. Now let's talk about a funny conspiracy right after a very serious conspiracy, you know, aliens on the moon. The moon will turn green. That's what some people think, not me. 
Do I have to explain this one? The only explanation given is that Mars and Venus will align causing a solar eclipse. This is impossible. Venus and Mars are way too small to align even if they did and cause a solar eclipse. They wouldn't even cause a shadow. They're that small compared to the sun. And it's very unlikely that they could even align. So I give this theory a zero, specifically zero moon landers out of five, because this theory is just dumb fun. Not joking with this theory. There is an actual theory that people believe that the moon makes people crazy and insane. The theory states that the moon increases childbirth, criminal activity, and makes people wilder. No pomegranates! I wish I knew what that meant. Conspiracy theories? What do you mean by that? What does that mean? Excuse me. So obviously, this theory has no credibility or believability. So, for that reason, I give this theory, drumroll please, five moon landers out of five. But seriously, I give this theory zero moon landers out of five, not five, zero, zelch. I don't know what it means in German, I just forgot. So everyone watching this, another dumb one awaits. So, internet, if you didn't know what a supermoon was, well, you're about to learn in this weird collage of interesting theories. It's, it's basically when the moon is closest to Earth. They're beautiful, by the way. I've seen them multiple times. And because they have more of a gravitational pull, when they are closer, some person in their basement, kind of like me right now, believes that it can kill us all. Let me explain. People believe that the moon is so close during these supermoons that when it is a supermoon, it can cause both earthquakes and tsunamis. I'm not joking. This theory as well as having no backing, as researchers for once actually looking to see if this has any credibility for it. And they haven't found anything yet, unsurprisingly. This theory does have more believability and credibility than the last one, which was utterly insane. But do I believe in it? No. And I mean, I understand that some people do, but I don't. So, I said earlier in the video that theories that do have credibility and believability that I don't believe in, I still give them a half rating because you can't deduce everything that has some credibility and believability to them. This theory, unfortunately, falls in that category and gets half a moon lander out of five. So, I'm guessing most of you guys clicked on this video to see this theory, and, well, here it is. This theory got me into conspiracy theories, because I used to love science, I still do, and I'm like, there's a something about science that hasn't been explained, it's so amazing, and that's the reason I had to do that brief history lesson in the beginning of the video. There was another reason I had to do that, and you'll learn at the end of the video why. This theory, like said before, got me into conspiracy theories, yes, but it was also the first conspiracy theory I remember liking and watching, and it stuck with me until this day. And the thing is, it also is one of the most elaborate, other than, you know, like the Illuminati. And I mean, it's also one of the most elaborate on this list. That in the aliens on the moon theory, which is still good. This theory has a lot of backing, but the first real piece of evidence we will be looking at is that 
There are no stars in the sky. It's just blank and it looks like a backdrop. The reason for this, claimed by the experts, is that Earth has an atmosphere. This atmosphere spreads the light across, but in space, there isn't one. And for that reason, you can't really see it. Also, you can't really see much other than, of course, the Earth because of how close it is. Even in this picture, you can't see the stars or the sun because, you know, it's hidden because it can't be spread evenly. But what can't be explained by some people is why the flag is waving. Now, experts claim that this is because they sew rods into the flags because they want to have it fly. Huh? It makes sense until you thoroughly explain it. Back then, I don't really think that we knew that a flag would go that if it didn't have one. So why? I mean, it's one of the weirdest things that you've ever heard. One of the weirdest explanations. So that doesn't make much sense to me. To some people that might make more sense. I'm not a trained professional. I don't know much. I've only researched days and days and maybe weeks worth of information, so what do I know? The last thing people hold on to with this theory to prove that the moon landing was faked was that while astronauts leave footprints, the moon landers leave no trace of ever being there, and it makes no sense whatsoever, especially to me. Experts claim that this was supposedly because the landers were more evenly balanced with their mass, while the astronauts' boots were nowhere close to that. What? And that, ladies, gentlemen, aliens, internet, was a brief explanation of the Apollo moon landing being fake news conspiracy theory. I hope you enjoyed that one. Now, I agree with the first two official explanations. Those could happen. But how? How, how, how can a 15,103 kilogram lander leave no trace at all. Yes, I did look it up. For all of these reasons and pieces of evidence, I give this theory two and a half moon landers out of five. I love this theory. By far, this is the theory that makes the most sense and it's the best. Excluding the next one, which is my personal favorite. Let's end the video with a funny theory that's not too serious, but still serious. And no, I'm not talking about serious XM. This theory is the most entertaining theory on this list just because it exists. Now this theory started off as a children's tale or story or whatever you want to call it. And for this theory to be true, there either has to be a giant cow or the moon was created without someone to create the cheese or a giant cow and was just created into existence. I like that personally. And just for the audacity of this theory, this theory gets the highest one of our list and gets six Apollo moon landers out of five. You heard me, I'm breaking the rules. It's my video, I can do whatever I want. Do I, me, truly believe in any of these theories? Yes and no. So I guess you can say that I kind of believe in some of them. Yes, I do believe in a lot of the theories on this list, most of them. Especially that moon being made out of cheese one. But the thing is, is that with theories, you can't usually deny them, even if they don't have much proof. And there are two theories. One of them I did give half, but I almost certainly don't believe in, which is the supermoon conspiracy theory, and the one I gave nothing to was the green moon conspiracy theory. Both of those, in my opinion, have no probability of ever happening. 
the other ones have some probability, even if it's not likely. I just want to thank all of you watching this video who stuck around until the end of the video. It means a lot to me. I also want to give a very big thank you to Wikipedia, History.com, Space.com, and Live Science for giving all of the information in this very video. It really helped, obviously, that's the reason I'm so educated in this video. This video has been a long time coming, and I hope everyone liked it. Specifically, this video took six weeks to film and edit, and most likely, most of that was scripting and doing everything because it has been a very long time coming. It's been a month since I released my last video, which, if you want to, it would mean a lot if you guys could watch that. If you did like this video, please, it would mean a lot if you would gently tap that like button so you don't destroy your phone. Also, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed to my YouTube channel, Mulkin, where you can expect one video per year. And yes, I am looking at you, Jonatron, who took a actual year to upload one video. One. By the way, I don't hate you, Jonatron, but there's probably only a 0.9 times negative 10 to the 666th chance that you're actually watching this, so why am I even saying this? Also, everyone, if you're new, remember to hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever one of my videos on this beautiful channel come out. Yes, it is worth it because like I said before, you can expect one video per year. The reason I tell you to click that notification bell, just click it, is because YouTube probably won't tell you that I've uploaded a video, uh, one of these glorious videos on this great platform that we're on, you know, because YouTube's finicky like that and doesn't care about its content creators. Also, comment your favorite theory down below, and comment what you want me to do next on this, again, amazing channel. If it's comedy, if it's supernatural, conspiracy theories, or movie review, whatever you want. I don't know, like, reviewing a pillow like this, beautiful pillow, or, I don't know, Mountain Dew Baja Blast review. Can, can you see that? Greatest thing ever created. Honestly, go to your local weapons. They sell these now. Hi, my name is Black. <sighs> and I have a granddaughter named yes. So, one thing before the video ends is I want to show off something my great grandma gave me. Something very important and something that inspired the video you are watching. It is an autograph. And I know you guys are wondering what's an autograph? If you don't know, an autograph is the signature of someone and they can get fairly pricey, uh, depending on the person. This is a real autograph that my great-grandma gave me, signed by Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. The picture is taken from the lunar module, and it uh, depicts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin planting the, uh, the famous American flag that weirdly waves uh, for no reason at all, and other than the supposed... supposed... Um, steel rods or whatever. I don't know. This is one of the most important things to me. This, uh, this is really, like I just said, it's one of the most important things. Uh, let me just read off the inscription from Buzz Aldrin. You proud Americans from Apollo 11 with best wishes. So, you know, of course, under that it has a signature. And, uh, of course, Neil's, um, it doesn't have an inscription, but it just, uh, it, it's just a signature, but that doesn't take away from the importance. So guys, you might be wondering, why did the scenery change? Well, it's because, uh, I'm filming this video on July 18th, 2020, whereas the rest of the video you just saw was, uh, filmed in late April. This is due to my, uh, whole entire room being basically remodeled and we're cleaning in it and all that. And everything's fine, don't worry about me. And I'm in my little green dungeon where I'm gonna do green screen in later videos. And to be truthful, I didn't like my original outro. I didn't like it at all. And I, uh, I'm replacing it with this. So you guys hopefully 
enjoyed this video. It'd mean a lot to me if you liked. I think I said that earlier in the video. I still haven't finished editing. So thank you if you guys are watching this uh, for taking the time and effort to watch this 37, 38 minute video. Uh, because this video is one of my proudest achievements on this channel. Anyway, guys, I love you guys so much. Love you. Bye. Namaste.
Look at me. Got what looks like a John Lennon cut now. Cool. Might have to use that for a video later. 